the rule of reason by friedrich heinrich jacobi seventeen forty three to eighteen nineteen this is from the flying leaves from prose writers of germany by frederick henry hedge eighteen o five to eighteen ninety it was published in eighteen seventy the reading begins on page two hundred and eighteen this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org if reason possessed power says a profound writer as she possesses authority justice and peace would everywhere rule but now with her dwells only right elsewhere with sensual appetite desire passion strength on account of this disproportion mankind have divided themselves into two parties the one the earliest in its origin cast about for means to bring force on the side of right they invented wisely and also experimented successfully but never with permanent results all their undertakings proved failures more or less in the end and dispersion ensued but undestroyed and indestructible however frequently and strangely they have been scattered and may be again in time to come they steadfastly persevere and will persevere in their intent no one not even from their own midst knows their present strength or weakness the other party likewise dissatisfied with this twofold dominion in man and desirous of putting an end to the schism after mature consideration of the hindrances which had caused the shipwreck of all the undertakings of the former hit upon the thought of an entirely opposite method instead of endeavouring to bring over force to the side of the right they sought to bring over right to the side of force they sought not to make the rational strong but to make the strong rational they accused the former system of hostility to nature of aiming at oppression and tyrannous despotism on the other hand they boasted that their own was in harmony with nature and at the same time did not conflict with reason that it only desired a good understanding between the two their plan was this the whole gigantic progeny of sense the lusts and passions should quietly come together and consult among themselves what was best the best was union but it was agreed that they would never be able to realize this union until they had put an end to the controversy with reason who dwelt together with them in their common country the human mind experience had shown that she was never to be quite overpowered and entirely cast out this in fact was no misfortune since the senses could so easily make peace with reason and then employ her to their own advantage nay make her entirely their own the way to do this was the establishment of a community the plan of which might without hesitation be left to reason to draw up for it was argued reason desires justice only for the sake of the common good in other words she desires only that each one should have his own the individual she does not regard nor care for neither does she regard herself that is the property or vice only of that which is an individual a person a self reason has nothing of this sort nor indeed of genuine reality therefore it was agreed they could boldly rely on the impartiality of reason and not only confide to her unconditionally the organization of the commonweal to be established in connection with her but even allot to her the dignity of the chief magistracy therein an office like the royal one in sparta an ephorate might be established in connection therewith and committed to the jurisdiction of the understanding Footnote the office of ephori a department of the spartan government the word signifies properly inspectors End of footnote. the people had elected reason and placed her over them simply and solely that she should maintain order and harmony in their midst she belonged to the common weal not the common weal to her 
the collective will was the true sovereign from whom reason derived her royal title and the authority connected with it merely as a thief should she ever forget this assume independent powers and attempt to exalt her nominal authority above the true then the ephorite must immediately come to the rescue and resist such attempt they could place the utmost reliance on the watchfulness of the understanding in this matter because the understanding is thoroughly and altogether a man of the people the two systems which are now here presented may be compared as formerly the systems of idealism and realism were compared with the two opposite astronomical systems of ptolemy and copernicus only the order of time in this case must be reversed the latter must be considered as the elder the former as the younger end of the rule of reason from frederick heinrich jacobi 1743 to 1819 from the flying leaves